Hello, this is Hildron from the CC here today to demo Windows 8 Consumer Preview. We will be doing a live show where we demo this live, but I thought it would still be great to have a video on this channel to show you Consumer Preview. So we're booting it up right now. We got the beta fish, a metro beta fish, which looks a little retarded, <laughs> in my opinion. It looks kind of weird. It looks kind of like origami, actually. All right, so it's logging in, and here is the start screen. It is different than in the developer preview. You can customize the colors, you can make the groups, you can customize the background. It's significantly better than in the developer preview. So as you can see here, I've got general and web and widgets, utilities and games. So you can separate your tiles into groups, kind of like you would do in the start menu. And when you move your cursor, you get a little button down here where you can actually click that and zoom out. And you can also do control and scroll. So as you can see, I've got groups here, and you can make these groups, and then you can right-click on them and click Name Group, and that's how you can set your group names. So when you're all done with that, you have all your separate groups here with those labels. So the start screen has gotten some significant improvements, and Semantic Zoom is in there as well if you have a tablet that can do the pinch and zoom and all that good stuff. So let's just take a look at the desktop quickly. So the desktop is still in Windows 8, and that would make sense that it is, but the Start Menu button is gone. So it's just really the taskbar and your desktop. But what they did is, they have this Start button right here. When you put your cursor in the corner, it shows up. So you put your cursor in the corner, and you can click Start, and it brings you to your Start screen, or you can press the Windows key on your keyboard, either one. But if you go to the Start button, and then you move your cursor upwards, sometimes it's a little tedious, it doesn't really work all the time, well, maybe I don't have any other programs running, but sometimes when I have programs running, it doesn't show them all the time. Let's try let's try to launch in some. Let's open up Finance. And let's open up Store. And let's open up Reader. This is the PDF Reader. They finally have one included in Windows. I think it's a little silly that they haven't had one for all of those other versions. But I can just show you what this looks like a little bit. PDF Viewer right click you get your options down here so we'll go back to the desktop so now if you go down to that start button and then you move your cursor upwards you will see that you can actually flip between your metro screens so I have the the PDF viewer here finance and the store so I can click on that and be brought to it or I can go back to the desktop go back to that start thing there or I could actually click and drag it in so I can drag it into the center to get it full screen I can drag it down to the bottom to close the application or I can do the snap function and snap it to the side and I think this is kinda convenient for certain things like Twitter and the stock app because I can just track the stocks just like this while I still use my computer normally on the desktop like this and if you wanna get rid of that you can just slide it over like that and it disappears so another part of the Metro interface is the Charms menu, and you can get to that by uh, putting your cursor in the corner here, and you can see that, or you can press Windows key C. So essentially it's uh, contextual menus, or icons that display contextual menus that differ between applications. So for example, I can click Settings, and I have Settings for the Desktop, Control Panel, Personalization, PC Info. So if I click Personalization, it brings up like my theme window here, I can change the colors and everything. And if I go back to that, settings, I have my network and volume control, power, notifications. And if you click more PC settings, that brings you to the Metro control panel. I think they should bring the tile back for this because in the developer preview, there was a, a tile on your start screen for the control panel, but there isn't anymore. So I would really like them to bring that back. But essentially, if you go here, this is where you can change your start screen look colors and whatnot so if I do green I can get green If I do pink I get pink and of course this applies for all metro elements not just the start screen itself I can do blue I can do all these different colors and I like this turquoise look so I'm gonna keep it like that and you can change your account picture here and you can change your lock screen so you can choose a wallpaper choose the notification things that you want to show up so for example lock screen applications I can click a plus button and choose weather so now when I lock the computer well I theoretically should get weather but I guess I'm not right now so let me unlock it try that again 
Okay, it might okay, it might be this then. Choose it to display status. And I'll let's lock the computer. There. Now we got it showing up. It says 37 degrees, Seattle, Washington, that sort of thing. So that's how you can get little widgets on your lock screen, and then you can just drag up to unlock the computer. And I don't want that on there right now, so I'm just gonna disable that. So that's pretty pretty good. And this this is just kind of what the Metro look looks like. If you're not familiar with it, it's kind of what it is. You got this nice font look, these uh the way you switch between tabs like this, you got your tiles like on the start screen. That's what Metro is a lot of, and it's really more optimized for tablets, but it's not terrible for desktops and laptops. And there still is the normal desktop, which is good, but there are still certain Metro things that you really can't get by. Like, you don't have a start menu anymore, so you have to use the start screen, whether you like it or not. There might be a registry hack to change that, but... I'm not entirely sure. So let's just go through some of the new Metro apps inside the consumer preview. We've got photos here. So this is your photo viewer. You can scroll through them like this. I, I just took the OS 10 wallpapers and put them on here so I had something to use. So when it gives you like a rectangle view like this, that's a folder and it tells you how many items are in it. So I can go to, let's say, do 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 nature. I can click on that and then go through the nature photos. I have all these options down here still. I can start a slideshow. I can go to an individual photo and I can right click and get options like set as lock screen, set as app tile, and an app tile, if you don't know what that is, is well these are the tiles basically, but you can set custom things for what they call live tiles. So you can actually show a photo from your library in there. And if you turn the live tile off, it just shows the default icon. But I'm gonna turn it back on because I like that. Same thing with stocks and weather. It displays the weather information on the tile and the stock information on this tile. But if you actually click it, it'll flip over and bring you to the stock application. Same thing with weather. You can get a small preview on the tile, but if you actually open up the application, it'll flip around and load up your weather. And this interface, I, I really like it. It looks really cool. It's definitely an improvement over the developer preview. So it's the same thing across all Metro apps, essentially. It's not the most obvious a uh, function, and it's not really intuitive, especially for new users. But what you do is, if you're on a tablet, you swipe from the bottom of the screen. Or if you're on a computer system with the mouse and keyboard, you right-click, and that's where you get your, your menu bars, essentially, to change things like add another city for your weather application. Same thing with, like, stocks. Let's go into that. If you right-click and do the swipe, you get your options to add other things and you can actually provide feedback since these are all app previews those will be out in the final version most likely all right so we have internet explorer as well there's a desktop version and the metro version the metro version has no flash support um, the interface kind of the same as the developer preview probably the same i would say if you right click up here you get your tabs essentially you can add a new tab get other options and like I said, if you go to the desktop and click on Internet Explorer in your taskbar, you can actually get the desktop version if you choose. Now, you can't switch between them with the same web page. You can't, like, take this window and blow it up Metro style. You can't do that. You would have to go to the start screen and actually open up this and navigate to the same web page. Okay, so let's get into a little more of the multitasking functions. Now, a lot of these controls for things like multitasking and the charms menu, they are not visible controls on the screen. This is one of the things that may not make Windows 8 that intuitive for tablet users, but especially for computer users. So I hope Microsoft notices this and makes a little change. So essentially, let's say we just got a bunch of windows open here, open up a calculator, just a couple basic things. So Alt-Tab is still in the system, but when you do Alt-Tab, of course, you have your Metro-style windows as well. So you can just Alt-Tab between those. Now, that's not a physical control, like I said. Like, not physical, but like a button on the screen or anything. There's no way to really switch between them easily with a button that's visible, unlike in the taskbar. A user would see the taskbar, and they could see these icons and, you know, know which is which, and they can click on them. But the thing you have to get used to for Metro is that the controls are usually hidden, even on the tablet version. So, like I was saying earlier, you actually have to go to the corner of your screen, go to the start thing, if it wants to stay up, and it's sometimes a little tedious. I'll just go to the top corner. You go to the top here, and then you can pull up your, your Metro screens. For the Charms menu, you got to go to this corner and bring up your 
charms. So you either have to know the keyboard shortcut, like Windows key C, or you have to know where to put your cursor to bring up those menus. And if you're on a tablet, you have to know where to place your finger and what gesture to do. So it's not that intuitive, but there's always room for improvement. And I'm sure Microsoft will make some changes. They've already done some nice ones. So let's uh, do some more with the multitasking here. So yeah, there's no obvious way to bring this up, like I said earlier, but if once you know to move the cursor to the screen there, you might not forget it. So that's pretty good. So you can switch between them just by clicking, like I said, and you can drag them out. But they also have right-click functionality, so you can actually snap left or snap right. So I could do, like, snap left here, and it'll go to the left. If I go back to that, I can, let's say, for example, I don't want the weather one open. I can drag that out and drag it to the bottom, and then it closes. And if you want more of a menu-based way of closing applications that are in the multitasker here, you can actually go down to them. Let's say I don't want the reader open. You can actually right click and hit close and that will close it right out of the right out of the sidebar there. And to get back to your start screen, you can press the Windows key or press the start button. So some things you will have to get used to because there are some significant changes from the I guess you would say trademarked user interface that has been in Windows since probably Windows 95 with the taskbar. Okay, so in the consumer preview, you can actually use the store and I'm going to hide this now. So you can actually get access to the store and browse your applications. So let's say we go to here, image effects. And um, if you have a Microsoft Store account, you can download all these, you can install them. And your updates show up right here in a little list. So that's how the store works, pretty simple. And when you install an application, it goes onto your start screen. And one thing that people were concerned about the start screen is it doesn't have like a way to show all of your open applications unless, I mean not open applications, all of your installed applications unless you start searching for the program. But if you do a right click on here and press all apps, you will then get an instant list of all your applications and the groups that they're in. For example, these show up as Windows accessories. These show up as ease of access and these show up as Windows system. So you can get your groups in there too and your Metro ones stay to the left side. So that's pretty convenient if you want to get to all of your installed applications. And you can even go alphabetically by doing a semantic zoom gesture or by clicking that zoom button. Okay, so with the charms menu, if you want to perform a search, you can start typing right away or just press the search button and that's when you can search for applications, files, settings, and even things within an application if it supports it. So if I type like mail, it would show me mail and I can launch mail. Now a few things about this, I'm not sure if the live essentials are still supported on Windows 8, I'm assuming they will be. The mail client on here is Metro only, same thing with the calendar client, it's Metro only. There's no like desktop version. And the thing is, you can't use them at all unless you have a Microsoft account. You can't use them with other addresses unless you can once you sign in. I'm not sure about that because I don't have a Microsoft account. And you can't use it just like a calendar. You can't just use it as a normal calendar unless you actually sign in with an account. So that's a bit of a limitation right there. So like on a normal computer, you'd open up the calendar and you can just put events in there and you don't even need to have an account for anything. And you can use multiple accounts on them, like on iCal on OS X. But on Windows 8, you need to have a Microsoft account to use the Mail client, the Calendar client, etc. So that is a limitation that I think they should maybe pay a little attention to and probably change. There is another program that is built into the Consumer Preview, and that is Maps. I believe this uses their Bing Maps service. And I'll hit Block on that. So you can actually search places and go to it. It's kind of like Google Maps, but it's Bing Maps, and it's a Metro version uh, for your computer. So that's uh, a lot of the significant changes with the Windows 8 Consumer Preview. I'm sure there's quite a few more that I'm not exactly mentioning. I do like some of these changes. I do like that you can customize the start screen a lot more. Uh, just a few things, like I said, some controls aren't too obvious to get to. They're not that intuitive. That might be tricky for users even even users that have used Windows before, it's a big change. Windows 7 to Windows 8 is a big change for this kind of stuff because there's no start menu and multitasking is not the same. So it's a little bit different. Okay, what next? Well, we've got some Xbox integration. I don't have an Xbox Live account, but essentially Xbox Live games and other Xbox functions you can actually load right onto the computer. And uh, I'm not going to sign with a Microsoft account right now, but this would be familiar to any Xbox Live user, and now you have these functionalities on Windows 8. And yeah, Solitaire is right here. I think 
You can play these games without having an account if they're already installed. So Solitaire, like it says play by, gives you information. And if you hit play, it'll actually launch Solitaire. And here we go. And you have your sign into Xbox, Xbox Live account there. So this will be nice for Xbox Live users, which I know there are a lot of. And we can play Solitaire. Let's see. What else? I could do this. I could do that. You get the idea. Just like on a lot of Windows systems, except it's a more modern version now. And that'll just keep running in the background. You can go do other things in the Metro apps or on your desktop. When you go back to that multitasker, you can actually see your previous screenshot of the uh, Solitaire app. And you click it and you just go right back to it. All right, so I believe those are the significant differences with Windows 8 Consumer Preview. Uh, I'm not going to go over everything that was in the Developer Preview because a lot of those things haven't changed, but new things added in with the Consumer Preview is what I wanted to show you guys. And if I had a tablet with Windows 8, I would show that, but I don't. So I did the best I could. I hope you enjoyed this demo. Go try the Consumer Preview from Microsoft's website. You can download it. I think it's like just a 2.5 gigabyte file for the 32-bit version, 3.5 gigs for 64-bit. And in this virtual machine, it installed in about seven or eight minutes. So it's a pretty fast installation. And the system is a lot faster than seven, uses less RAM, has a new task manager with a new interface that you can look at and see how much, how many resources it's using. So it, it's a lot better. But like I said, some things probably should change. For example, like if I want to shut down the computer, I got to open up the charms menu. I got to go to settings. I got to go to power and I got to hit shutdown. So there's a few extra steps to do some very simple things. And I hope Microsoft notices those things and changes those so i hope you enjoyed this demo of windows 8 try it out yourself let me know what you think and see you in the next demo